Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Graham Harrison. I'm the IT manager at Lincoln College, and uh, I'm going to present a bit of a case study to you. I'm, I'm really pleased, actually, that Gordon's put version two of the presentation up because version one said a simple IT manager's view rather than IT manager's simple view. So I didn't want to get it off on the on the wrong foot. Um, I also wanted to mention that Gordon kind of probably bigged us up a bit too much at the start because we're you know we're not a bit of a vision of where I think we can get to relatively quickly with a, with a kind of FE type investment with, with bring your own device. So um, I've, got, I've, I've looked at bring your own device as a bit of a puzzle really because I, I think it is, I think it puzzles everyone uh, and I've broken it down into the four simple pieces which for me uh, have made up the puzzle to get into a bring your own device solution. So at Lincoln College, it very much started with Thin Client, which is a program which is itself a work in progress. Um, that were, you know, it started in an experimental form about two years ago, and it, it's very much been an enabling technology for the whole piece. Um, so we built a Thin Client solution based on Microsoft terminal services. Uh, we, we've done quite a lot of bespoke in-house. Uh, now the reason for going down the terminal services route for us is that for FE colleges, uh, Microsoft are very generous with their campus agreement and, and other licensing and enables us to use Microsoft technology uh, very efficiently. So, so that's why we built it on terminal services. Uh, we, we're still on Windows Server 2008 R2 terminal services at the moment, and we, we package up and deploy our applications using AppV. Um, we've got a, you know, a little picture of a row of thin clients there, and I think the first thing you'll notice is they're not actually real thin clients in the true sense of the word, like, like the small wise units that, uh, that you see that tout, the tout is real, real thin client. They're, they're small form factor PCs that we put our own image on and they, they boot into, uh, into our terminal services. And, and that, that is, they're, they're as cost effective as, as the wise units because although the wise units got very little in them, they, they are pretty expensive. And we're also, at the time we did our prototyping, using a small form factor PC enabled us to use the latest RDP client so we could stream video and we actually found that when we we went to a classroom of ancient PCs tried streaming the video and it wouldn't stream it was all jerky and it wouldn't go and then we deployed the th terminal services image on it and went to thin client you could actually stream some high def video on the same PCs which half an hour before you, you couldn't stream so that, that was that that all kind of went into the solution so it's a massive program for us I mean got, got <coughs> three and a half thousand desktop devices that you know wired desktop devices for about 40% of the way through the conversion. Um, and this one, although we, we talked about benefits, I'll talk about benefits a bit more, but this, this was a cost reduction uh, primarily for us because there, there's such a price differential between a, an old thick client PC and a small form factor PC. And also, the size of the estate is so massive, it's just getting too difficult to deliver support with the small numbers of IT staff we've got. So it's very much about cost reduction, you know, uh, it was also about centralised administration, improving response times, reusing old kit, and, and getting new software out to the client. So, so that's uh, that's the client. And then very very soon after that, we started to think about remote access, and, and it didn't take much effort to take our thin client solution and to open up using native terminal services functionality, so people could connect in via a browser, um, and they could start getting onto the the thin client network externally from anywhere with internet access, and that, that was a bit of a revolution at the college. I mean, nothing like getting access to the network experience remotely had ever been there before. So suddenly, students and staff are, are making use of services like files, storage, email, calendars, print, getting at their applications from anywhere with internet access. And that was working quite well. But in practice, what we found is that the native terminal services external uh, connection, the gateway, it only worked with a distinct subset of device types, operating systems, and browsers. So at home, uh, my daughter's laptop running Windows XP, bang, straight in. I got, a, I got a machine with Vista. Not quite sure why I've got a machine with Vista, but I have. And that will not connect under any circumstances. So you know, very quickly, you're getting a certain subset of your staff and students can connect, others can't, um, you know, no support for couldn't get through from an iPad at all. So, so it wasn't really working that well. Um, 
So then one of my technicians was doing some research and came across a project called, a, a product called Ericom Access Now. Now this, this is a product which can sit in front of terminal services and it means that anything can get onto the remote access gateway that can support HTML5. I know some of the other presenters talked about HTML5 and how that has been an enabling technology. Um, now, it is a pretty modestly priced piece of software. I think we paid something like $9,000 for the purchase price, £1,600 plus VAT a year in, um, in maintenance and support, and that is for a license for 200 concurrent users. Now, clearly we'll have to monitor it, and if we get in up to or beyond the 200, we'll have to invest some more. But it, uh, and, and so far, we're at the experimental stage with this. We've, we've got a beta test going. Uh, we just need to do some more infrastructure work to, to get it out there. Um, so now we've got support for any, any, any browser that supports HTML5 can now get at, the, get at our network remotely. And that includes uh, IE10, IE6 through 9 will work with the Google Chrome Frame plugin, which is very, very easy and painless to download and install. Works with Chrome, works with Firefox, works with Safari, so suddenly the iPads and the Macs can get on and use, and use the, the thing client. Um, it's also now it's been installed on low balance servers rather than one terminal services server, so it becomes more scalable. Um, so what I'm going to try and do is uh, see if I can give you a demonstration which may go one of two ways. So let's, uh, let's have a go, see how we get on. <coughs> So far, not very well. Uh, so there we go. Right. So you won't see the Ericom Access Now page when it's in production, but you do see it at the moment. So I'm just going to do. Now this is now logging onto the Lincoln College network. You know, for full-blown network experience via the thin client. I'm going to come on to talk about wireless in a bit. I have to conclude that the wireless here <coughs> isn't ready for bring your own device because it's not moving very swiftly. It does move quickly on a decent, uh, a decent wireless connection. Um, so there else, I'm wondering if I can, I might be able to turn my very own acronym actually because I've not brought your own device today. I've kind of taken my own device. So I think I'd like to put TYOD out there as the, as the next big thing. I'll get an event sorted out. Yes, a TYOD <laughs> device. So I'm not going to show you anything flashy on there because it's not moving very swiftly, but just to show that I have managed to get my connection, I've got the full, the full network experience. So we talk about wireless a little bit then. So at this point, we've got a thin client network. It's all going quite nicely. We've got remote access. That's working well. What, what do we need really to bring um, a terminal services, bring your own exp device experience to Lincoln College? Well, we need good wireless. Um, now... In about July last year, we concluded uh, what for us was for a very, very big you know, £7 million rebuild on our Dean's Sports Building at Lincoln College. Um, because we, you, know, we had, that was a, you can do things with new build easily that you can't do with your existing estate, we, we built uh, wireless into the contract for the Dean's Building. So we went with Aerohive after comparing various manufacturers for for lots of reasons, actually, they came out very economically. They, they, uh, we were convinced that technically it was sound, we were getting good support from them. So I think, uh, oops, going the wrong way. So a little picture of an error high access point there. there. There are many supplies you could, get, you could go to, and the, you know, the, 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 the chances are that the big players will work for you. Uh, there's Maru out there as well. Now, so, the wireless went into the, the Dean's building, and with the Ericom Access Now, we get in, we genuinely get in, bring your own device um, into that part of the college. So then I started thinking about rolling it out to the rest of the college. And uh, I think other presenters have mentioned that you do need to ensure that your network is up to the job before you go slapping another 300 access points onto the network. Um, so I wanted to know for sure if it could, and I'm no network expert, so I've engaged with a, uh, an education to education provider called HRC Cube, who are a company that span out of Hereford Regional College, and that they, they, have, they have partnered with many industry experts, and you can go through HRC Cube to pull down the best networking experience, the best storage experience, the best, the best server experience, and get them into your college for, for you know, a, a relatively affordable rate. Um, 
So a big piece of consultancy there. And what we've concluded, actually, is that there's no way that the Lincoln College network in its current state can sustain 300 access points all across the piece with all of the devices that are likely to plug in. So it looks very much like, unfortunately, this year, I'm going to have to redirect the, the, the capital that I had ring fence or wireless in another year down the road. But you, know, you, 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 can't, you can't blunder in and add all these devices onto your network without being very, very sure that it's going to scale. Because if, if the net effect is that you cripple the network for all your wired users, <coughs> then you know, they're, they're not going to be very happy about that. So I do think I do, I know we've talked about security a lot. I mean, I, I'm not convinced that security is as big an issue as some people make out, particularly not with this solution where, we, where we're effectively putting thin client onto a device because that device it was never genuinely plugged into the Lincoln College network when I gave you that, uh, that demonstration. It, it just isn't. So, and if I access a spreadsheet, a presentation, whatever, the data is not stored locally on that device either. So, so that, that kind of takes a lot of your security headaches away. It is true to say that if that was a laptop, I could take a spreadsheet, copy it, and stick it on a USB stick or stick it on the network's, on, on the laptop's hard drive, and you'd have a security implication then. So I'm, I don't want to make light of it completely, um, but I just believe that, you, that if that's the approach you take, then your problem is so much smaller. And, and I think, as, as other presenters have said, that governance is very important in the management because you can abuse security on a device like that just the same way you could leave in a printed report on a train, or, or you know, someone could wander past a window and read something off a screen. It, it, it's, it's all part of the same business. And the only way you're going to manage that is to put governance and policies in place. Now, I, I came across the ICO paper as well. I think that's an excellent, uh, an excellent paper, actually. I recommend anyone go and read that. It doesn't scaremonger it, but it puts things together in a very understandable and, uh, and balanced way. Um, so I'd say here, here are my tips that I combine with the ICO paper. Certainly update your policies and procedures. You know, your staff have an obligation to read your policies and adhere by them. Um, put pin access on the devices. That's not difficult to do. Uh, appropriate levels of monitoring. It mentions the word appropriate several times in that report. Certainly you can, you can find tools which can do a locate and white facility if something does get stolen and you're worried about it. Um, implement a lost and stolen process, so there's a way of staff reporting things that have gone missing. You know, most of those are governance things. It's not, it's not technology that's, that's in place. Um, so as, as the various presenters have been presenting, I've kind of thought, well, you know, what are the problems and issues with, with my approach? And, and there are some. I mean, I think the, the video that Microsoft put forward with all the really high-end things they were doing with, with sharing files and you know, putting videos of the planets upon the screen and all that stuff, this is more basic than that. We're not doing the high-end sharing. But you know, I know from talking to students and staff that what they want is ubiquitous, single-click access to the college's network, to their files, to Moodle, to word processing, to email, to PowerPoint, to Excel. They want those things first. You know, there's a huge demand for that. Um, so, so yeah, it's, 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 not, it's not quite as high-end as that, but it's, it's certainly an, an awful lot simpler and quicker to understand than to implement. Um, and also, we've had debate about small screens, about could we have you know, webmail on a small screen, and we've, we've, we've said that it's not very easy to use. I'd certainly agree with that. Um, so, you know, th this isn't going to be appropriate for very small devices, but we have got other things on the go, like uh, student portals, the Cobra portal that Salford Software do, it kind of reads information from a host of back ends and it puts it on a very, uh, in a very nice, colourful, readable, understandable format on a, on a small device. So perhaps we, could, perhaps we could use more than one technology to solve it. Um, so I did think I also, into my, my kind of second puzzle, I wanted to talk a bit about the benefits because we, we do need to have a think about is there a good reason for doing doing this. Um, and when I'm thinking about benefits, the very first thing I consider are who are my stakeholders then? You need to know who your stakeholders are and then you can work back to what the benefits are to them. You can understand whether it's a good idea or not. So I think in this project, in the whole wireless, bring your own device, my main stakeholders are my students, obviously, always come first, staff, senior management and the IT services unit. So what does it do for students then? It means that they can use their own devices of any type 
um, to get on the college network from anywhere, and they will see that as a, as a benefit. Certainly with the Aerocom access now, they can consistently, easily and reliably connect to the college network. And, and in FE, and I suspect in the majority of sectors, if you put things in which are five clicks instead of one click, you know, it isn't going to get used. So it has to be, it has to be really painlessly easy to use this technology. Um, they can access electronic learning at home, so it's going to encourage them to get involved in, that, in, in electronic learning or on the move or any time from any location. Um, and they will be able to take part in, in online seminars. They'll be able to get on, they'll be able to use Moodle. We'll maybe, we'll maybe integrate Big Blue Button with Moodle so you can have seminars online. So there are genuinely lots of student benefits. And the, the long and the short of it is that bring your own device and wireless it is a, an expectation that students have because they, they've grown up with this technology. Um, you know, my my our twins have used it from primary school. Uh, they have used it from age four. So you can't have them come into college and suddenly not use it because we're a bit scared about the security. We're going to have to find ways and means of dealing with that so we can deliver this technology. And if we, if we get too scared of it and don't deliver it, we're just going to be behind the time. So yes, there are some some questions, we've got to find ways to get it sorted. Now staff, the benefits for staff, I think, when we get there, like I said, because I'm going to have to get the network sorted first, I may be two or three years down the road yet, but just think at the moment, you've got a classroom, 15 computers in it, you get, you get a class allocated to that classroom, there's 18 students turned up this year, what happens? Well, typically, the answer is the sharing of computers, which is, which is really poor. So you imagine the scenario where you get your 18 and you, you have maybe thin client laptops, you know, very, very low power laptops that work the same way as our small form factor PCs. You pop three of them open, you bang them in the room and your rooms can flex up and down so you can respond to different class sizes. You can solve some of the nightmares of timetabling that happen in any sizable educational institution. That is a great benefit. You can enthuse learners, they, the staff can institute enthuse learners through innovative and engaging delivery. I mean, we've seen the, the wall this morning, which I think is great, the voting, that's great. Uh, just engaging with their mobile <coughs> phones, encouraging them to take part in lessons. And, and I think that would have an impact on success rates, which is one of the KPIs of, of the institutions that we work in. Um, yeah, they, they, we could, they can, staff can suddenly start to use various types of device without, without worrying about is it, is it a wired PC that, that IT approve of. They can use the device type which is appropriate to the type of delivery. Um, they can exploit different delivery channels to Im improve the reach to various types of students and, you know, and that could enhance recruitment and retention which again are KPIs in an FE institution. So real benefits. IT can manage resources more efficiently you know, to exploit fixed demand. Certainly, the, when I think about the, the fact that I'm using thin client, which is one of the enabling technologies to increase the centralization of IT administration, that's one of the only ways I'm going to be able to carry on supporting this estate, which is growing exponentially, with a number of staff <coughs> which are simply not going to be increased in the current budgetary climate. Um, we can provide services in line with stakeholder expectations, which is nice. You know, we, we, we're not just running around fixing stuff which is broken with this technology. We're really providing something new and exciting and meaningful to our, to our customers. We can extend IT into parts of the college, which previously we haven't been able to reach. I mean, there's bits of my college where we can't go into the roof spaces because there's asbestos worries. So there's a, there's a corridor at the end. There's a machine the end, room at the end of the corridor there. No chance of getting technology in there. Well, with this technology, you know, you, you, you can increase your, your, your reach. You can be more responsive to emergency requests if you have got to put those extra three PCs in a room. You know, currently, we're, we're going to have to talk to the facilities to get the power. We're going to have to talk to a, a contract to get the cabling, another contract to get the ducting, and then we buy three PCs. And six months later, if we're lucky, we have our three PCs by the time they've finished teaching the class that they, that they wanted them for. Uh, and also, we, we've been able to use some of these technologies to mitigate well, we will at some future point to mitigate from disaster recovery. So if, 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 we, can, if we lost a, a room or a building and we could have a remote access provided from another site, that then you know, people can potentially access the college systems without having to come to that building. So it has got the potential, some potential to provide some DR benefits. 
Now, senior management, think about what, what, is, what does my boss want to get out of this? Well, he wants to be able to demonstrate the provision of outstanding resources in line with customer expectations, and it very definitely ticks that box. He wants to be able to demonstrate effectiveness over our competitors. So we don't want to be in the stone age where our competitors, you know, the, the small um, apprenticeship provider that's only got to provide technology into one office. You know, we don't want them racing ahead and providing excellent IT that, that we can't match. Um, value for money, efficient use of resources, you know, all, all things that senior management are interested in. And, and I think with this one, we can demonstrate, I've given you some of those KPIs, we can demonstrate how technology can be used in direct support of, organi of organisational strategy, and you can demonstrate that back all the way to the Board of Governors. Um, and finally, I think you know, if, when I get to this stage, I've got the network sorted out and I've got the bring your own device going, I've got the thin client going, the remote access, I, I will find you know, some partners to case study and I'll get those case studies in the press somewhere so that I can raise the highlight and profile of the college, you know, shout a good news story about IT, you know, maybe raise, raise the profile of the college more generally to increase, uh, to increase attracting new students. So I, I think you know, just those, those masses of benefits. So you know, we, we can't ignore it. We can't stick our heads in the sand and hope it's going to go away because it's a bit difficult to deal with. It's a bit difficult to implement. We, we've got to find a way to make it work. And you know, we, it's going to be a long haul. In, so I, I started with simple a bit flippantly. It isn't simple, really. It's simple in theory, but in practice, it's going to cost an enormous amount of money to get this done. And get, getting the network to a state where it's ready to have these extra 300 access points, <coughs> I think it's going to cost a quarter of a million quid to do that. And I think to roll the wireless out around the college is going to cost another quarter of a million pounds. And, you know, I, I've got to go back to the board and convince them to spend it. You know, that, that's, a, that's, that's one of the things an IT manager has to do. So it's going to be, it's going to be a long and difficult and complex path but just look at the benefits that we can get to if we can manage to do it so so, so for me I'm, I'm a little bit interested in the security and of course if there is some massive security breach then it's my name on the on the top of the data protection policy but it's not really one of the things I'll, I'll lose any sleep over I'd much rather drive this forward and deliver these benefits to to the college <coughs>